Captain Lovell, you were one of those kids in school that wanted to learn about rockets, I remember. You, you, you were right in tune with the, the same thinking. Well, yes, and uh, I was turned on when there wasn't a space program, and so, uh, but... Uh, that was before God he, created water, right? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Way, way back there. But, but, but you're, you're right, Phil. The, uh, you have to have a passion of some sort. Not so much that the space program is the uh, catalyst that gives the people a, a, a passion, but young people have to latch on to something that they really like to do. Uh, whether you like, uh, you know, astronomy or whether you like uh, flowers and you want to be a botanist or you want to do, but you, you start following a pattern and uh, uh, that's, I think, what gets people started. And, and I think the space program was just a factor for a lot of people who like to have uh, engineering uh, things going on and want to do that type of work was the incentive to go follow what they have done and and then do what they want to do and keep on going. The people I meet, you know, every day uh, who are over 50 say, you know, I got started because I watched you on the uh, landing uh, or going around the moon as far as I was concerned. That makes me kind of old, so we come to think of it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> you know, there's what, let me tell you a little anecdote here. I was in the, the what's so-called uh, in mission control and when Jim uh, was in orbit around the moon. And they, they did, what, 10 orbits, as I recall. I should remember, since I helped you plan them. But, 10 uh, orbits. Uh, and on the last orbit, the key thing that everybody was waiting for was the timing of AOS, acquisition of signal, <coughs> when they would come around the moon. And of course, that was, did the engine fire, and were they going to make exactly the right time when we got their signal? If it was off, then we knew they had a problem with that engine. The place was packed. The viewing room, you couldn't have, you couldn't have, have, have levered another person into that viewing room. It's the same with Michigan. And sure enough, right on time, here they come, everybody cheered. Two missions later, this young man, <laughs> then young man, was in orbit around the moon. Same situation, had to fire that engine to come around. I looked around, I was in mission control again at the Capcom console. I looked around, nobody in the viewing room. <laughs> We've done that. And that's, I think, illustrates what we're talking about, is that you, the excitement that comes with knowledge and understanding that generations of young people overall are not getting today is extraordinarily important to be do, to, for this country or any other country to do great things. You got us on a roll. Let me add one more thing. The problem, the problem today, and it's our fault, perhaps, mom and dad, our school system, whatever it is, we have become risk averse. What's in it for me? If I take a job when I got a, out of college, how many vacation days do I get? What's my bonus going to be? Do you think today we would be bold enough to put three of our colleagues on the top of a Saturn V, the largest rocket in the world, for the first time, and on top of that, not just launch them, send them to the moon. That was bold. We were bold during those days. We need to be once again bold today. Someone asked me a, a question earlier in the day, how long would it take us to go to the moon if we said started tomorrow? Twice, three times? as long as it took us back in the 60s, 70s, but a heck of a lot longer, I'm positive of that. You know, Phil, and that's sad commentary. When we, in between November of 1968, with the launch of Apollo 7, which was almost on a Saturn V, in November of 1969, we launched a Saturn V, or its equivalent, once every two months. Think about that. Once every two months, one of those rockets left the Earth. Headed to the moon. Headed to the moon. And it was a bunch of 25-year-olds that were doing it. And they were 25-year-olds with slide rules who told you, if you fire the engine just long enough, we are just certain it's going to put you into lunar orbit. You, you know, when, and when, you trusted them. When we <laughs> launched, when we launched on 17, the ground said, you guys are right on trajectory. It was perfect. You're going to miss the moon by 50 miles. 
You don't remember this, but I mumbled back to him. I said, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> slide rules. We flew with slide rules in those early days. Took a slide rule on Gemini. Figure out how you're going to rendezvous. People, uh, no, it, well, looking at the age, half of the people don't know what a slide rule is. Huh? You flew with Omega watches to keep time. And my friend Paul Knappenberger is, keeping time, on is us. keeping time on us. And I believe you've told me that I can't go We're any longer. Fun, Paul. I think if we took a vote, people would just, sure you know. <laughs> uh, please join me in thanking our wonderful guests.